The Breakfast Show 2021 on KBC English Service. My name is Melissa Antaroka. The big conversation is underway. We are just getting started and it is Wednesday, which means we'll give you some perspective on the headlines that have been, uh, you know, you've been reading and watching for the last one week. What a week it has been. The president launches an aggressive response against his opponents. Then there is messy war of words, accusations and counter accusations between uh, former vice president and the deputy president. And today marks the end of the Donald Trump era. What next for the USA? Now, your favorite analyst, Ambrose Weather, will be sharing his views on the week's events. Weather is a man who wears many hats. He is an advocate of the high court, a published author and mentor. And plus, he also sits on the board of Lake Basin Development Authority and is a canon of the Anglican Church. Today, Weather joins us virtually on phone. Good morning, Weather. Good morning, Millicent. How are you? Oh, I'm fine. We miss you in the studio, but it's great to have you on the other end of the phone line. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's also my pleasure to be on this uh, program this morning. It always fills my heart on Wednesdays. Wow. The audience loves you as well. Ah, They are great people, great people who listen to our national radio. Okay, Weather. Now, uh, firstly, the president came out fighting this week, responding to the attacks he has been facing within his party, specifically uh, from his deputy and the Tanga Tanga team. And he chose to do so through a few Kikuyu language radio stations. Was this message just directed at the president's base in Mount Kenya? Uh, No, I think the president was talking, but he seems to be seeking sympathy from whom? a sense of belonging now you see i'm one of your own and there's this one from the rift valley coming to do this and that and that Uh, and uh, that that could have been the basis because otherwise he's a present for all of us some of us are on this side of kisumu and uh, we would have loved to hear the message clearly so choosing to attack some of his friends or to respond to some of his perceived friends uh, in kikui language at home is basically to attract what we call new money sympathy home uh, kind of uh, mimi na we we are together i'm your child now you see you are allowing a stranger and i can tell you that's a very dangerous approach at in these middle times mm. yes now let's look at some of the views that uh, grabbed the headlines in the president's uh, interview that was aired on monday morning he urged people in central kenya to support bbi because it would change their lives for better he denied it was a project to support royal odinga's bid for power will this message resonate in an area that has been lukewarm to bbi uh, i think he needed to have crafted a much better message I think the message that they would like to hear is a message which says that somehow uh, the Kiku nation will continue to be around the big table of power. That they will hear. But when you are talking about uh, changing their lives, I think those people are farmers. They are coffee farmers. They are milk farmers. They are uh, wheat farmers. They want to see money in their pockets. They are businessmen and women. Those are the things they want to see changes. They don't want to see BBI. So, so, so there needs to be a crafted, a better message than that it will change your lives, it will make you better, it will grow you. Because I don't think that those people are ignorant. There are people who know. There are people who have been there. They have been under Moi. They have been under Kibaki. They have been under Kenyatta. So they know the difference. And actually now the problem is the economy. The economy is uh, in doldrums. The, the, the Kenya shilling against the dollar is now 112. That means that our exports are expensive and our imports are, uh, we drain the foreign exchange. Things are in doldrums and they would have loved to listen to the ways of dealing with this so that we restore back to the Kibaki era. During Kibaki era, there was thrift. There was a lot of money in the people's hands. The banks were there giving loans and things were cheap. Now we have corona. We have uh, dwindling fortunes, economy. These are the things I think these people would have had. If you told them that the BBI, in the BBI, there are solutions that will then generate uh, 
by economic drift, then it will be a good message. But going there that it is not for Raila, it is for all of us, you'll get more seats than others and then uh, more money from the national government at a time when even the little money to the counties has not been released. It may not resonate well. Uh, I think uh, also there's a time that the president has to deal with that he seems to be betraying his own deputy. The one they went to Hague with together, the one they have fought together, and he has walked out to embrace uh, somebody else, and uh, now he wants to fight this field. So all this requires a properly conceived and well-conceived and properly laid message. Otherwise, they'll may just have to uh, do a dabra kadabra so that the BBI passes. Now, the president also countered the argument that the BBI referendum process was expensive by saying that the country actually loses 2 billion shillings to corruption. Some people are of the view that uh, it is very strange to hear the president admit that, you know, the country loses that sum of money and his government can't do anything about it. I don't think, uh, yes, I, I think uh, the, the government is losing money. We don't know how much. It is good he has said it. But the strategy for fighting corruption is not amending the constitution. It is like somebody says, make us dictators, make us have uh, sweeping powers. And then we deal with corruption. Corruption, the, the people who are corrupt are known. You can't get a billion shillings from government unless you are in government or highly connected. You can't. In fact, you can't get a, a million shillings from government unless there is something, there is deep connection. So these people are known. The only thing is that they want a situation where the rights are abused. The way they used to do what was called kamata, kamata. Somebody comes in and then there's, you are all swept. You are all swept from, uh, from your house with your children and grandchildren and even the ones unborn uh, under the guise of Kamata. Now, when you go to court and the court says, now, in court, we need this kind of evidence, we need this kind of thing, you then can't prove. they are stuck. Mm -hmm. Now, this is uh, 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 not there for a ground to say, oh, we need to amend the constitution so that we deal with corruption. Corruption, those who still are well-known the way it is known, and you need proper, non-politicized process of investigations and prosecution. There was a time, I think, when you oppose, like, even now people fear, if you oppose BBI, and the DCI will come to you, the DPP will be with you, and the KRA. Now, that therefore undermines the fight against corruption. When money is lost in Kimwaror, Areor, Dam, that money was released from Treasury by people known in the Treasury known to them uh, over issues that are known. You cannot say we need to amend the constitution. Wanjiku in Kisumu and Ajin in Kiambu does not know how money comes out of treasury into the pockets of people. So I really don't think that that message resonates well for selling BBI. I still insist we need to package something good, something tangible. Whether during that interview, the president once again dismissed the Hasler versus dynasty uh, narrative by saying that what is wrong in becoming a doctor if your father too was a doctor? Now, uh, that is very strange. Let me tell you, Millicent, mm -hmm. uh, before it is safer when you divide people on the basis of tribes, where when Jaluo, this one Kisi, this one Kikui, because that is true. It is real. And you can have several lines. You say that you can hit Kikuyus against Kisis, and Kisis against Luos, and Luos against Loyan. And it works, and it has worked the whole world over. But that is not where the pain is. The pain is the economics. The food, bread, and butter. Food, mm -hmm. Ugali, and Sukumawiki, mm -hmm. and, and, and Omena. Now, when you divide people along those lines, that is where the hustler versus the dynasties come. It is dangerous. So the president should not deal with it like that. Especially, Kenya has known that his father was a president, that they are very rich. Uh, Kenya has also known that uh, Sir William uh, purported that they were selling chicken <laughs> and he has risen. Mm -hmm. And many Kenyans are actually poor. And when the economy is doing badly, they become very sad and very angry. So that hustler nation is a time bomb that needs to be dealt with well, properly, and nicely by putting in place economic policies and the matters that will make people have hope and look at it in terms.
terms of growth. Otherwise, you look at it and say, this is the Nazis. And it is, uh, when you look at it, Honorable Raila Odinga, his father was vice president. Mwai Honorable Pinyata, his father was president. Musalia Mudavadi, his father was minister. So so when you talk about the Nazis, you say, yeah, it is true. It is true, all the things. Mm -hmm. So there needs to be a proper message. The only answer that there may be is Kalonzo Musio. <laughs> uh, but he has been also in power too long. Then the other, then, then uh, who, who, which other Asla? Akuna. <laughs> so that message, the president needs to deal with it in a different way. Let him call some of us. We will show him, Your Excellency, this Asla business. Follow it, attack it this way. But if he says, oh, there's nothing wrong, oh, what, what, I even heard on Raila saying that his father was also a Asla. Mm -hmm. I say, hey, what are you talking about? Your father was a high school teacher. I'm not saying <laughs> written in books. He was eating bread and butter with the Wazungus. Jomo Kenyatta was in America, Britain, eh? mm -hmm. wearing a suit. So when you're talking about handlers, you're talking about chicken sellers, <laughs> eh? or men are sellers. And there are many. <laughs> so that well, message needs to be dealt with properly. When I will go back to the president's interview later in regard to Nairobi County politics. But uh, let's talk about the ha the handshake, okay? Is the handshake really facing trouble? Because the ODM leadership has been asking questions about the Jubilee government's performance uh, since it came to power. It started with James Orengo's views at the weekend and was amplified by his party leader uh, shortly after. Let's, uh, you know, just get to listen to that clip, whether... In six months time, we shall give all the children in schools laptops. In six months, we shall be able to create one million jobs for our youth. Sasa wanasahau mamba yae. Wanarudi kusema sasa, yile mutu wa mkokoteni, yile mama mboga, yile mutu wa wimbaro. Musikuje hapa, ati muna kuja kukosoa rais. Ati muna kuja kumuuliza sijui mambo ya laptop. Hapo mahali mumekaa kaeni pole pole. You cannot come and lecture us about why things have not have happened. When you are the one who has brought confusion. Well, uh, the deputy president says that ODM is actually preparing the ground to bolt out of the handshake agreement by raising all these questions about the Jubilee government's performance. Do you agree? No, my view is this. Uh, ODM knows that they have brought bad blood between the president and the deputy president. And the uh, BBI train is wobbling to push the president, to force the president to add more fuel on the train, they have to threaten that they are leaving, they may leave, they don't care. They have done it before. You have had people saying, we leave, we'll go back on the streets. Then uh, the Boomer's uh, conference was held and so on and so forth. So I think these are being said as a strategy to put the president in a panic mode, then to push for BBI to ensure that BBI referendum train moves faster and it is done this year because we're already going to February and maybe if it does not come by August then people will say why not wait next election why not just wait and put them together with the question so, so it's not basically that there's a problem with the handshake it is a strategy employed by the um, the Tialaland tipping people. They love the Tialaland tipping things. And now the president is being cooked in it because he has left his allies, the fans they fought and won the presidency with. That is my view. We just read in the Daily Nation this morning that Jubilee Party is actually pushing for some formal cooperation deal with the ODM, like the one it entered into with the Wiper. What's your view on that story? Yeah, they may push for it, but I don't think uh, it has any use. I can see that the deputy president has bolted out. They are uh, uh, having UDM and uh, Will Barrow and maybe another party. Uh, UDM, I don't think, may, 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 may be very keen. Other than to some kind of cooperate to share the spoils, positions in parliament and in government. You saw the last time when uh, Wakina Murkomen were thrown out at Kidiki, ODM team gladly came into government and now they are lavishing themselves. But that will be temporary for 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 
uh, the time. Otherwise, uh, I, along the way, when we after the referendum, if there's a referendum and BBA is passed, I see ODM bolting out and being very, very, very critical of the Uhuru administration. Now, meanwhile, the ODM leader has maintained his engagement with groups from central Kenya. There was a cultural function a few days ago and he invoked the name of Kenneth Matiba as his uh, inspiration. Let's listen to that clip. Matiba was a mountain climber, a mountaineer. Alini fundisha kupanda mlima. Mwangini wanasema Raila wezo kupanda mlima. Ntawa mbia yo ngo. Mutaniona uko. Kama ulichukua mali ya mutu, rudishie mutu hiyo mali yaki. Iyo ndia sasa tunaweza kuunganisha Kenya hiyo kama kitu kimoja. Last hivyo tunadanganyana. What is the hidden message when Raila says he will climb to the top of the mountain? <laughs> I think that means that the, that the mountain will not vote for him. But I, I think uh, Honorable Raila is doing well, but he's living in the past. If you take the 90, 1992 up to now, the children who are born then are almost 20 years. So they, they don't understand uh, this Matiba, all these people and so on. All, all, all these Wazes were pouring libation. You know, I saw some pouring libation, drinking some God-forsaken uh, uh, brews in some pots. This generation does not that. The Facebook generation does not seem to understand that and they are many. So it needs to change tack. The, the real uh, Kiku up there that understands Matiba, understands um, JM Kariuki, understands that bunch of people, they are now uh, in, in their sunset. The young person today only reads some of these things in the history books for purposes of passing exams, not playing politics or voting. So he needs to have a clearer, better, modern message. Let him remember that President Uru and Deputy President came out and said, we will give you laptops. And people were up in air, jumping and happy. Him, he says, oh, the elders endorse me here, they endorse me there, these elders. And, and we look at uh, these uh, people, I've seen some elders, they go and get the Nyakinyua uniform. <laughs> then they say we are elders. It does not resonate in the 20-something century, 2021. Whether during okay. that clip yes. we played earlier, the ODM leader actually says that anyone that has acquired wealth illegally should return it. Is, is it not hard to, you know, guess who that message is aimed at? Yeah, I think he's trying to attack Ruto on that. But he doesn't understand. If we are talking about acquiring wealth illegally, then uh, he will be leading... Uh, uh, then the father to president, uh, our president will be following. Then the, 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 the former. Then we have the latter. But the worst part of that message is he's telling the very people he's addressing that in my administration there will be revenge. We will be looking at people and saying you stole, you stole, you stole. Desmond Tutu said, and um, uh, Mandela also said, there is no future without forgiveness. Some of these things, if we were to revisit them, we'll never have a country. Wow. So as he talks about uh, with some people acquired wealth illegally, I don't know whether Ill what illegally he means and whether that is the message we want to hear. We want to hear economics, we want to hear corruption being stopped. Now there's... What is being stolen now, the president says, is a billion a day. What was stolen many years ago is much less. So can't we, first of all, before we go to those who stole, deal with the continuing stealing? Let's stop it. What do you mean by his leading from the front? What I mean by who is leading from the front? Raila. Ah, uh, but even if you come here to Tunglo, here, 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 here in uh, Kenya, Kogonye, <laughs> as you on your way to Kisia, there is molasses plant with a huge parcel of land, which was donated by people. He took it. You know, when we confess, when we go before the Father to confess our sins, we must say them. So, 
let's talk if we are going to talk about that then we are going to talk about things which will generate a lot of this content nobody's clean even the bible itself says uh, we say if we say we have not seen we deceive ourselves and there's no truth in us so well, that, him also uh -huh. if, if, if the message is about corruption let's deal with stopping corruption then if we go to the, 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 the historical ones let him lead let him say, I'm returning the Otonglo land. And then now, let also Ruto return. Uh, let also others. I, luckily, President Uhuru uh, has not been mentioned to be fleecy. And whatever was alleged to have been taken, was taken before he was born or when he was a young man. <laughs> so let's deal with the perpetrators, the actual perpetrators, before we go to their children or their grandparents. Well, uh, let's remain on that theme of corruption accusations. And there has been a very messy exchange of words this week between the sitting deputy president and a former vice president. Listen in. Unatuambia ati slogan ya chama yako ati ni kazi kazi bila wizi. Nafikiri umechanganyikiwa my friend. Kiri slogan yako inataka kuwa wizi wizi bila kazi. Mahali unaishi ni ardhi ya serikali na umeifanya ikawa ni ardhi yako. So wewe tuliza boli my friend. Wachana na mimi. Can Arab Mashamba tell Kenyans how he acquired large tracts of land in Taita Taveta County. I therefore demand on behalf of all Kenyans that the DP subjects himself to a transparent lifestyle audit. Whether you've just heard, things have turned really ugly between the DP and the YPA leader, you know, Kalonzo Musyaka. Um, each accusing the other of grabbing public property. Is this part of the battle for the Machako senator's seat or is there a bigger narrative that we are missing no, between I mean, the two men? There's a bigger narrative to bring down the DP. They are, they, they are hired each other and now they are all lining on one side because the DP seems to be making inroads in the country. Uh -huh. This is hustler narrative seem to be selling with the hustlers. And I told you the hustlers are very many. But when now two books Two boxing champions are boxing each other. Mark Tyson and Havana Holyfield or somebody. The battle is fierce. Those land, those grabbers, both of them, where Honorable Kalonzo Musioka lives eh, is NYS land. That he knows. And he, 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 we have no record that he bought it. Then uh, the DP also, in just a short while, he became minister and DP. He has a must half of Kenya. So when they fight, just uh, let Kenyans pay attention. They just listen so that because they'll be revealing secrets <laughs> of what they have done and what they have been doing. And the battle will be bloodier. But I think it is to check the deputy president. Now as you you know, just had I mentioned Machako's senatorial by-election uh, because we know that Kalonzo's former ally, Johnston Mudama, is now in the DP's camp and last week the Wiper Party unveiled Mudama's estranged wife as their candidate in that by-election. So it all seems like a very personal battle in the weeks ahead. I think it is very personalized. Listen Highly personalized. Uh -huh. But I thought if, uh, you know, the, if uh, the other side were to pick on a strong candidate, mm -hmm. then Wiper has a chance of losing. Why? Because I know Wiper will not pour money. Wiper will be uh, banking on goodwill. This is a Kamba place, send out the Kamba, want to be president. But if, let's say, Saulian was to put in somebody and then uh, they send uh, wheelbarrows, and uh, in the wheelbarrows there is money. There may be a uh, distortion of the voting system. And I think that's where there's bitterness. That's why they are fighting and they're also insulting each other. And I know Mudama also will want, we will, will just want to, to, to deal a blow to Honorable Kalunzo. Now, we are staying with the, the deputy president's camp, and this week he scored another major coup uh, when his old rival in the Rift Valley Expo met Governor Isaac Ruto offered his support for the DP's bid for leadership in 2022. Listening. <laughs> We nani, wacha madharau, wacha kiburi, hata boda boda ni biashara. 
na boda boda inaweza kuwa biashara kubwa kesho mimi nafuata sera i am not here because you are ruto and i am ruto no i am here because your ideas are okay for this republic whether uh, you like to call the former bomet governor ruto with a double t <laughs> what does this support for deputy president mean in the rift valley where ruto he wants to go back uh, as governor of bomet uh-huh uh, but above all his friends honorable railo dinga and muhuru uh, mwigai kenyata okay first of all honorable railo dinga has left him in the cold the handshake is now almost two years. Some of the people are eating from Luland and is in the cold. Then President Uhuru has also left the fellow in the cold. He has seen that the only way to come back is to be re-elected. And he's seeing the wave in the Rift Valley is uh, controlled by the Hasla Nation, controlled by Sauliam, the chicken seller. So he is uh, being tactical and uh, preparing for the future. I really don't think he loves William like that. It's just like, let me fold my tail and let me go in and get my seat. Mm -hmm. Then from there, I will chart my future. Okay. Now with Ruta's support, does that leave only Gideon Moy leading the anti-DP group in the Rift Valley? There will be a margin. Some will emerge. So far, it's only uh, 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 Gideon Man Gidi. But I really don't think that he's needing anything because he has not put in money. He's also a man of class, a prince who has grown up. Uh, he never walks in uh, mud or on foot or, or, or eating, drinking morsek from every corner. So he's really uh, opposing from uh, the studios, the TVs and the radios. But on the ground, I, I really think he's a visitor in Jerusalem. So for the name, he's opposing. But in the actual fact, is not. Then secondly, resources have not been put. Sauliam has put resources, these other people have not put resources. So it is opposition on paper. Wow. Now we promised to return to the president's remarks this week, especially when he admitted that he supported the bid to impeach uh, former Nairobi governor Mike Sonko. We all knew that Sonko, you know, has lost the president's support, but were you surprised that the president admitted as much? No, 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 I was not surprised. I think as I said earlier, Sonko's goose was cooked long before. And I mean, listeners may treat my comments also on the basis that I'm uh, biased. Biased that Sonko was not the right fellow to run Nairobi even when he had a chance. He got, he, he was doing voodoo management. Running health as skelter, not doing things. Just making his uniform. Feeling like he's a general. The acts, I would call of some madness. Then he went to state house and signed off things. Then he said they gave me something to drink. A big joke. So his exit, I think uh, for me, it's a uh, good riddance. But uh, that was not possible unless there was a clear word from the president. Now, so, so all the uh -huh. handshake side, uh -huh. all the handshake side were prepared to deal with uh, the removal of uh, Governor Songo. What I really don't like is the way they are flouting the constitution. Okay. Now, Sonko yes. was very angry with the president's remarks and instead turned the blame on the head of state for engineering his downfall. Sonko's response was too bitter, even for the president's rivals like uh, Moses Kuria. You are not supposed to insult the president. Whether you are minister in whatever capacity, a president will always remain a president. Deputy and a remain who are deputy. Nataka kumwambia Sonko machungu yasifikishe kutaja kama ile maneno unapia rais. Mimi niko na watoto. Rais yako na watoto. Watoto kusikia ati rais ni mtu anaweza kuua mtu. Hapo watoto watafurahia kweli. Of all the things you cannot call Uhuru Kenyatta a murderer. No, it is not right and it is not proper. Sonko and the president were once the best of friends, but it has all come to a very bitter end, weather. Yeah, I think it's betrayal. But Sonko should not blame the president. The president of Nairobi is a city sit in the sun, a hub in Africa, requiring good management proper running. So they were good friends that supported each other. He really worked hard for the president uh, to win uh, elections and uh, that was very good. But now he had a job to do, which it was like it was a boat in which all of us are in. And he was uh, 
steering it in a health forward, backward, left, right, center. I really think here he left the president with no choice. Mm. Uh, the way it was done is the, the way that uh, may be painful. I sympathize with Sonko on the manner in which it was done, the fitness in which is a, it was undertaken. But it left the country. It left the president. It left me also as well with no choice. Imagine somebody is not working. The, 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 the approval, approved plans cannot go through for buildings because they are sitting on it and they have a tall station. All this would not be allowed to work. I understand, but I, I can't understand how even if you are close to a friend, you would then talk some very strange epithets against not only a friend but a head of state. That goes further to show that Honorable Mike Mbuvi Sonko is a madman. Because when you speak, the, the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. When somebody speaks, you are able to see and say, Kumbe, these are the people we are shooting, they are associating. But because many people are mad and they have good support, the president has no choice but to work with him. Now, meanwhile, Otherwise, uh -huh. I think the remarks attributed to Honorable Sonko, mm -hmm. it is bad, he should never have done that, mm -hmm. and it should be advised. I would want to meet him and counsel him and lay a hand on him and tell him to go to Jesus Christ so that he can cool his heart, he can stop drinking those things and being bitter and look forward to the kingdom of God. Weda, yes. this drama in Nairobi continues, you know. Benson Mutura who yes. was sworn in as acting uh, governor less than a month ago purported to hand over the office to Anne Kanan Mwenda who has herself uh, been was vetted and sworn into office as deputy governor on Friday last week. Listen. I now therefore relinquish my acting as the governor of Nairobi City County and resume my duties as the speaker of the Nairobi County Assembly and allow Her Excellency Madam Anne Mwenda Kanan to proceed and assume the office of the governor in a substantive manner. I'm not a politician and I will not start being one. I am focused on bringing a new spirit of cooperation, collaboration, partnership and mutual respect with all organs of government. Now the courts intervened and brought the plans to swear in Anne Kananu as Nairobi governor to a stop. Is there any legal window to squeeze in Madame Kananu and install her as governor and powerful forces seem determined to? Let me tell you that it is a, a very laughable hoax that uh, has been pulled against the Nairobians on this Kanan business. I wonder why the Attorney General and my president and my friend Uhuru Kijata just accepted to do this this, this, this hoax, this ignominy on Kanan. It, it, it is sad. It, 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 it is something good now has turned into a, a laughing stock. Constitutional laughing stock. Something strange. Uh, I, I don't know, but she will be acting albeit albeit uh, unconstitutionally because she's the deputy governor and uh, where there's no governor the deputy, the constitution requires that uh, the deputy uh, assumes not acts, assumes uh, the, the that position but now I know that uh, he will be doing the work without necessarily the official See, it is very laughable, it is very bad, it is very dangerous. Dangerous for today and for the future. Governors be on notice that this kind of constitutional operation will recur and will affect our idea of the rule of law. Whether we just talked about that matter of the Nairobi governor's position, which is in court, and that takes us, you know, nicely into some legal events of the week. The Judicial Service Commission has officially declared the position of the Chief Justice vacant. Now, meanwhile, the former occupant of that office made these remarks in an interview with Citizen TV this past week. Do you know that there are three court orders directing the president and even giving him a time frame and he has not appointed? As far as I'm concerned, that's a violation of his constitutional duty. In fact, I would say if it was in other countries, the president would be impeached for that because he swore to uphold and defend the constitution. 
Now, former CJ Maraga says by refusing to swear in the 40 judges, the president has contravened uh, the very constitution that is what to protect and uphold, which is an impeachable action. Do you agree with the ex-CJ? Oh, yes, 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 yes. I think uh, the president needed a more brilliant way of declining this. But not only did he decline, which is uh, maybe okay, but then there were other subsequent court orders that compelled him to swear the men, to appoint them and uh, swear the men. I think that one he uh, declined, and among others. So even if he was not impeached, I think one day somebody will raise these things up so that it takes account. Some of us have prayed over it, we have fasted, we are wishing, we have always said, may our president uh, be more obedient to the constitution, to the court orders, so that we have a viable and growing nation. But there are also some people on one part of the divide who thinks that you just disobey these orders, you still put, it doesn't matter. One day, maybe, uh, these things may come back to haunt the president, which is very wrong. So, impeachment uh, uh, is, a, is an option, but it's not an easy option that can be easily taken, especially for a sitting president who was given a, a, a sword in Kasarani. That's what symbolizes the raw power and their political and economic interests. So, impeaching him may be very, very difficult. But I think we continue praying. Some of us are continuing advising that the president should obey some of this for the sake of the country, for the sake of his grandchildren. Whether we all know uh, you are very proud professional, but the scenes at the special AGM called by the Law Society of Kenya must have really embarrassed all you learned friends. Listen in, listen in, listen in, weather. Look, the politics of the law society have always been this. If you look back into history, you will find upheavals of this kind. And I can only refer you to an event of similar kind in 1989, when the lawyers were tired with the leadership of uh, senior counsel Fred Ojambo. But today it was the reverse, where members came to assert the authority and said, we want an audit of the books of the law society of Kenya to be undertaken, so that we ascertain how our monies are being spent. Now, whether the LSK President uh, Nelson Harvey explaining those ugly scenes where, you know, lawyers went for each other's throats, can the current LSK council, which is split right down the middle, continue in office in such a state? I think there is need for reconciliation, but uh, we have degenerated as a law society. A few years ago, when I was I was running to be chair of the Law Society of Kenya, and uh, most of my membership said, ah, you are an Uruman. And I used to tell them that uh, uh, we have degenerated so much, the LSK roof is leaking so badly that unless leadership comes in to do the repairs and we repair back, we will live to regret as we degenerate into the abyss of confusion and morass of ignorance. Now we are almost reeling there. If you look at the law society, it has been divided between seniors. The seniors who eat with the big spoon, they don't give a hoot. Once they get their practice certificates and their CLE points, they don't give a who those who are fighting. Then there are also young people who think that the seniors have been wrong. So they are moving fast and they are rebellious and they are difficult. So all some people are doing is to tap into that energy. Then you direct it to serve your interest. So when I want somebody beaten up, I take some of my goons who are lawyers and we go and beat up people we don't like. When I want to something by a point, I have my goons on Facebook, they insult people I don't like. We have degenerated and we continue to generate. And there's need for us as lawyers to sit down and look at from where the rain started beating us. You cannot blame one side and leave the other. My brother, my younger brother, my friend Nelson Harvey I was unanimously elected. He's a good, courageous president. But I think he is not getting it right in terms of consensus building and good leadership. As you know that President Moi was from a minority, but he was able to keep the country together. Whether, President Kibaki was from a majority. Uh -huh. He was not able to keep the country together. So ability to keep the society together running, notwithstanding the wrangles, notwithstanding the difficult uh, the, 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 the issues, requires more brinkmanship, good leadership as opposed to showing strength. What was there in Katanga Road was the show of might, 
which does not augur well for us lawyers. Rather than exchange blows and insults, can't members who are not happy with the current office, you know, use the laid down procedure to replace the current LSK office? You see, you can only replace them in AGM, and in AGMs, people, uh, people marshal their troops. It is ah. like a national delegates congress of a party. Yeah, people bring their troops, and when now the troops, uh, the, 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 those who are big numbers overshadow the small ones, and then the disagreements turn into blows. Lawyers, we 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 we, we, we needed not just to, to, to talk about replacement. That we talk about working together. Two years is a very short period. One mm -hmm. year is gone. We needed just to 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 wrap the remaining year. But I think I know that a fish rots from the head. There's an issue between the president and the secretary. Then some council members. So people have dug in like concrete. They have dug in mm -hmm. to their spheres of influence. This is where the problem is. You need someone with a matong. To go and break the concrete all sides mm -hmm. so that it is soft uh, soft soil then we mix it again that requires not only intervention of jehovah himself <laughs> but senior lawyers and uh, where necessary members of goodwill uh whether uh, let's move on to you know uh, the uganda elections we have two actually international events to discuss including uh, our regional story yoweri museveni is back for a sixth term in office after winning last week's uh, election and uh, he declared that he was very happy with the way that the polls were actually conducted listen in weather i think this may turn out to be the most cheating free election since 1962 after a long struggle i think i'm about to succeed in controlling that criminality this one has been helped by the introduction of the thumbprint read by the computer to know that this is no other person other than seven and i'm told that some people maybe were disabling the machines so that they allow the cheating but i'm told that the machines were rectified and in many cases people voted by the machines these elections are actually very good i'm very happy with them myself because they are taking us into the realm of real politics. Well, the last week when we talked about the elections in Uganda, you said that Bobby Wine was, you know, a president for the future. Do these results prove that? Oh, yes, yes, yes. yes. Oh, Bobby Wine, if he lives alive, he lives long and continues the energy, he will be the president of Uganda because Museveni is tired. He only that he eats well and things are facilitated. In fact, the performance of Bobby Wine is uh, amazing. It's beyond expectations. It is big. Looking at what he went through, it seems that uh, Museveni was genuinely afraid. Mm -hmm. And that's why he deployed the police and the army and stopped him from campaigning. So if they were to meet in seven years, six years, Museveni will be more frail, older. And um, Bobby Wan will now be maturing, early mm -hmm. middle age. And if he makes friends locally and internationally, talks, let's say, to Sir William and, uh, and, uh, and um, uh, the handshake team, and they also pour in money, then Hon Museveni will be in trouble. Big, big, fat trouble. You will only have one way to steal in broad daylight. Otherwise, I think we have to congratulate Bobby Wine for good performance, amazing and uh, surprising performance, and also to pray for Kagota Museveni to lead Uganda in a more peaceful way, with a lot of wisdom as they grow, and also to prepare to, uh, to retire, prepare <laughs> to take a rest. He has been there too long and uh, not augering well. Let them allow uh, um, a new breed also to come in and give in new ideas. Whether uh, Museveni takes a keen interest in political events in Kenya, will he have any form of influence in the Kenyatta succession in 2022, given that the deputy president has been reaching out to him in the past uh, few years? I have directed federal agents. Sorry. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. First of all, Museveni is a president. Mm -hmm. That influence alone, and is a good friend, uh, Nani respects him, Uru respects him. And uh, he also uh, doesn't like Raila. So when things are tough, he would be easily arbitrated mm -hmm. and, uh, and uh, persuade Uru, President Uru, to, to look more in favor in terms of Ruto and not Raila. They are not good friends with Raila somehow. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. 
Uh, secondly, he, 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 he also has friends in the region, regional leaders. Some of them listen to him carefully. They are friends. He will talk to them and uh, influence. Thirdly, uh, he has money. Money, 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 money. He will contribute. If he gives you a billion shillings, uh, you will pay back by giving them a portion in Kenya, like uh, here they have business in Namasha. So they want somebody who will protect the business and also to expand the business towards the sea. So I think uh, who, uh, um, uh, trying to seduce Museveni is a good political venture. Well, uh, whether... Yes. Let's move on to the United States. Today is a huge occasion in the U.S. Joe Biden is inaugurated as the 46th president of the U.S. Meanwhile, Donald Trump leaves the White House for the last time as the president. I have directed federal agencies to use all necessary resources to maintain order. In Washington, D.C., we are bringing in thousands of National Guard members to secure the city and ensure that a transition can occur safely and without incident. We know the times are tough, but because of you, we're filled with hope and we're filled with hope for America's future. Now, the U.S. transition process kicks in today, but there are unusual circumstances because the outgoing president will not be witnessing the swearing in of his successor. What do you make of these events, Weather? Ah, this morning, early at 4 a.m., I prayed. As I was praying, I remembered President Joe Biden and uh, his team. I also remember Trump, that may God settle his heart, give him peace, and I uh, just prayed and said, God, I wish he left yesterday or the day before. Whether it's in the inauguration or not, it does not matter. It does not make anything. But he has caused sufficient mayhem, fear, and despondence. Some of us were in Kenya. You know, he hated Kenya. And we are privileged to have visas of five years. And one time he said he would reduce it to one year until President Uru went to talk to him. So we are looking forward to the inauguration. We know the King of Kings will surround and cover the place and continue blessing and protecting America, which is our big brother. We also pray for Donald Trump to have peace in his heart and to look back and uh, to say and to go closer. To God, I know he doesn't uh, know much. He, as some books I've read, he doesn't know much about God, but he needs to come closer. Well, the good he has done, may we congratulate him for. The bad he has done, may we forgive him. But I think it is a great day. It's a great day for that transition. We are now having stability in America, and therefore stability for some of us in small nations like Kenya. Whether Donald Trump is living in disgrace, he was impeached a second time by the House of Representatives last week and now faces trial in the Senate even after he has left office. How will history judge his four years in the White House? Uh, tumultuous. I think they started very well in terms of economics, but uh, you know there's power of life and death in the tank. His tongue has killed many people and many things. Even the good he has done has been killed by the things he says. He did very, many good things. Economic issues, bringing things, settling world order, all this. But the way his attitude and the talks and so on and the way he handled corona and even allowed himself to get it and allowed more people to die, um, history will be um, very, very harsh on him. I am done a book, a motivational book, that will be coming soon after in the next, uh, I think next month is called Dare to be a Donald Trump. Wow. Eight uh, uh, traits that make him iconic mm -hmm. and the four flaws that eat at his legacy. So uh, we will read him, history will read him uh, harsh, more because of the many words. He, he lied open and it didn't matter to him. He, he would speak and deny. Those are himself, but there are certain policies which were very good. So he was not totally bad, but the way he pushed the world, it is what we will just say, wow. Whether, uh, let me just read out something uh, from one of our listeners, Samuel Otato, who says from uh, Emuhaya. I'm, I've been following up on Trump, and I think that Trump had a poor childhood upbringing, hence the bitterness. What do you think? Yeah. Uh, yes, if, if you read, there's a book written by a niece, the, the daughter to the brother, the elder brother. It was a rich family, but very crooked. 
and the way the, 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 the father to that lady died and the way the family you know the way you you do bad things for the sake of the name of the family and for the sake of money so trump is cold in heart if you read that book and then you verify and that is why he thinks everything is about himself him and he alone the world is there and then this was watered by the fact that he then ran for the presidency once and he just got it and said wow it is this easy it is this simple mm -hmm. everybody else is an idiot the way he is an idiot and he all these things except me and if you read his books the art of the deal becoming a billionaire it is all about him as a superhuman being he grew up to build himself as he was uh, to build himself as a superhuman being the father also brought him up to be like a superhuman being and that is one of the the four things that is hitting at the root of his um, legacy Savimi Munjaru says I think Donald Trump in my opinion has been one of the best presidents the US has had in the recent past for me I love him because he spoke his mind and he's a fighter of what he believes in even when it's openly misguided uh, President, uh, I have said there's power of life and death in the tongue. The Bible wants you to control your tongue. When you are a president, you just don't speak your mind. There are certain times you keep quiet. Just imagine if uh, President Uru was to walk into Kisumu and say, you know, this lawyer's up here, you know I hate them. What would that mean for generations? So as a president, he comes in and says, uh, there's this son of you in Nolan here called Ambrose. I really hate that guy. He, it is that simple, but it will damage careers, it will damage people. So you can't say that a president speaking his mind. And that that's not a president. A president only speaks policy and good things that grows a nation. If you see the way he handled corona, the way he spoke about corona, people have died and they are buried. So when somebody says one of the best presidents, I really don't understand what they mean by best when some people are already buried in their graves. I don't understand. Well, whether. Thank you so much for finding time for us, Weda. Thank you. Thank you, Melissa. And may the Kenyans, as we wait for the corona vaccine, mm -hmm. may they be ready to receive it without porojo, panganga. And we continue praying for our children in school and our safety and our economy that is growth. We also remember President Uru as he moves on. May God give him wisdom, knowledge, power, and understanding. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Weda. Of course, we are hoping to see you back in person next Wednesday. I will be there. Ambrose Weda is an advocate of the High Court, a published author and mentor. He sits on the board of Lake Basin Development Authority and is a canon of the Anglican Church. We are always here with him on Sundays from 8 o'clock, uh, you know, as he gets to tell you how you can be prosperous. Remember, a podcast of this conversation will be available on www.kbc.co.ke and you can listen again on air and that will be straight after midnight on The Night Runner. Hey, 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 what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? The Breakfast Show 2021 20, KBC English Service On KBC English Service